So uh, to start us off, I just saw it. Listen to Dylan, everybody. Dylan. Okay. Okay. And what, what does that give you? And then, and you got x equals 10. Is that a solution, by the way? Does it work in the original equation? Did you check it? Is he right? Does that work? Good. And that's what you had, maybe two. I don't know. All right, well, actually, I, um, uh, let me ask someone else here. Harry is here. Did you solve it that same way, or do you want to talk? Do you want to? Okay. Anyone have another thing to say about this, or did you solve it a different way, or did you? You got it. Yeah. You got a solution. You plug in random numbers. There you go. That's one solution. Um, Isaac. Talk to me. Negative four works, Isaac claims. That's a big claim from the man in the back corner. Can you guys check him on that? Is x equals negative four a solution too? Yes. In fact, it is. And he's right. Even if you wanted him to be wrong, he's right. Okay. That's how math is. Um, all right. So what went wrong? Can someone revise our? I mean, Seems like our method wasn't was strong enough to take that. Um, I think this counts as another stick, though. No, no, yeah, it does. It's no, it's not. They, no. Unless someone else can explain. Does someone else want to explain? It? What's going on there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right here, couldn't x minus three equal negative seven also be like the route to thinking about this? That thing squared is either a seven. That thing squared is either a seven or it's a negative seven, right? And that leads to our two responses. So that would be one technique. Are you sure out there? Are you sure no one else has solved it a different way? Everyone did it that way? It's fine if that's true. But yeah. It's way more complicated. It's more complicated? Yeah, I think this is a great way because it's the easy, maybe the easiest way we can think of. So that's why you all approached it. But I would love to hear another method if you have it, even if it's more complicated. You, you're, you're, you're up. You have all this space. So. Um, uh, what else was I going to say about that? Uh, yeah, I like this. Um, we're looking for easy ways to do these if we can. You know, even though there might be a couple different ways to do them, I think this is a great way to do it. You see, it'll multiply it out or something? Yeah. Okay, all right. Let's see it happen. Have you already started cutting those equations apart? You actually don't have to cut them apart necessarily. You could have told me that. No, you can though. I would like. I mean, that's why I provide you a solution. Oh wait, I don't have to exactly. I don't want to. I mean, you can, you, can, you can decide. And actually, if you want to do this as a team instead of individually, that's fine too. I gave everyone their own. Hey, if I cut this out. Do it out real life. Remember one of these methods, that's okay. 
If you even have a vague familiarity with them, though, that would be maybe it's sufficient to answer this question. I'd like you to put the equations you've cut out on top on your placement, on top of the technique that you would use. I'm not asking you yet to solve them using that technique, but just think, how would I approach each one? Which technique would be like the most fun for me to do on this? Which one would be the most annoying, right? So, and if you don't want to cut them out and place them on there, you could write them on there if you want. Yes. Or, I don't know, whatever. However you want to do it. This page. But make this a table conversation too. Which technique would you use for each of the equations? That is the question. So I use the square root formula for the x squared value. Talk to your group. Maybe you can even come to some consensus at your table about which equation you want to put in which four, which of the four boxes. Oh, so you've got kind of just take the factory. Yeah. 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 Not. You didn't do the factory. Jordan, by the way, Jordan solved the warm-up today in another way as well. If you want to look at his work, that's interesting. As he told, he himself said, it's, he did it in a harder way. But it's, it's very interesting.
one he says complete the square again I want to just emphasize the fact that that's, that's a technique that would work I, okay but did you want to do it a different way Aaron? factory okay uh, Johnny x plus a squared equals 29 what did you say there on that one okay. x plus a squared equals 29 how would you solve it X plus eight squared yeah. equals twenty nine. Quadratic formula. Okay. Anyone want to suggest another way or? Aaron says square roots. Okay. I mean, it feels like the warm up problem today, and most of you didn't use quadratic formula on that. You just took square roots. Yeah. Or maybe there's a way to factor it. I mean, Jordan showed us that way, and that, that that's possible. Now with the next one. Five x squared minus ten x equals zero. David K. What you say there on 5x squared minus 10x equals 0? You see that one somewhere? On there? Did you figure out where you're going to put that, huh? Completing the square? Okay. Anyone want to suggest another way? Or we good on that? Yes, Andrew? Factoring? Okay. We don't even know like what these techniques are, probably. We've forgotten what they are, but do you remember how to do them? Okay. Meg? I did. I'm going to just say uh, X squared equals 100 at the end there. I'll just take one. Help me out, Megan. Megan's not here. Uh, just I. X squared equals 100. What you do for that one? Huh? Square roots. Okay, anyone want to suggest another way? So you could agree with them? Okay, I don't hear anyone saying anything else. X squared minus 8x equals 3, uh, about uh, uh, factory, okay. Anyone want to voice another, suggest, suggest another way? Or? X squared minus 8x equals 3 is the equation in your question. Is it? Okay, completing the square. Anyone else have one? Good. Okay. Uh, Andre, so what about x squared plus 6x equals 20? Quadratic formula. Anyone want to suggest another way? We good? Okay. 3x minus 5 squared equals 31. Uh, where'd you put that one, Sandra? x squared minus 5x, uh, x, 3x minus 5 squared equals 31. Where'd you put that? Factory? Okay. Anyone want to suggest another way? Yeah. Factory, okay. Mm -hmm. The last one, 7x squared plus 13x equals 61. Uh, Noah, help me out there. What do you, what do you say? I put that one. 
factory, okay. And the last one, anyone want to voice a different opinion? Go ahead, Daniel. Quadratic formula? Complete the square? All right, yeah. So notice that people are answering different things on these, and even though this is a judgment-free zone, uh, I do have some judgments <laughs> to, to level against some of the techniques you suggested. Some of the techniques people suggested went uncriticized, too. And yet, I do think that there are some better ways of doing one than the other. For example, let me just come behind you and say, on the warm-up, I do think that taking square roots is, among the various techniques that are available, is the most efficient, best, and least error-prone for you on the very first problem, right? So just, just want to say that, okay? Uh, so good job there. But keep in mind that we're looking for what makes a good method. Uh, efficiency, right? Producing correct answers consistently. Um, yeah, speed, fun level, all right? I mean, those are all things that we want to take in consideration as we think. Here's a quadratic formula. Just, I just need a quadratic formula in the wild, right? And you want to kind of tackle it. Which technique you want to use, I need you to be able to weigh that in your mind. Now, in order to weigh that in your mind, though, you need to have like a dominating mastery of all of the techniques so that you're aware of like when they're going to be good for which situation. Today, in fact, I'd like to kind of make sure we're good on um, uh, on completing the squares, the one we're going to start with. Okay. So uh, here's my unit intro. Did you did I already mention as you came in today that we're kind of switching gears a little bit here yeah. from exponential and log things? Some of you might welcome that change. I don't know, but I, I don't know. I kind of like the exponential and log thing. Which oh. Yeah. So today I'd like to, um, I'd like to, you know, we're actually starting unit two today is the point. We're going to do quadrat finally after one whole quarter. We're going to start with a discussion about quadratics, as you can see, uh, and that's going to last for about two weeks here. And we're going to take you deeper than you ever, you've ever been before, because I know you already had studied quadratics, but I promise we're going to take you even deeper. And then followed by that, we're going to have a whole discussion of higher order polynomials too. What about general cubic equations or general fourth degree equations? What do their graphs look like? What kind of end behavior do they have? What can we say about what, where their solutions are? How, how to solve them? All those are great questions. But today we want to just start with quadratic stuff. Um, you did this matching activity. I guess I'm past this on the slideshow here. Okay. And the next technique I'd like you to think about here, like I said, as we embark on this journey, we're going to spend four days talking about how to solve quadratics, culminating with a little quiz on Friday. And I promise it is little. I can just tell you right now the format of the quiz. It's just four, four equations for you to solve that are quadratic. That's the format. Right? 20 points. It'll be like very short. It'll uh, hopefully take you less than half the period to do. Um, so that's the format of the quiz on Friday. I just that, That's my goal for you this week is to like make sure you have a dominating mastery of all the techniques we just mentioned on it. But we're going to start with completing the square. It becomes a resource that allows you to just look at two sample pieces of work and see what the techniques that are used there are and answer some questions about them. They're up there too, on the board. And this will hopefully, especially uh, problem B, um, help maybe jog your memory about how completing the square works. A should look familiar, right? Based on your work from the warm-up today. And, okay, look at problem A though. And then especially, especially look at problem B. Thank you. 
scraps of any kind that you want to recycle. Or be around. Okay. Yeah, if you feel really expert about uh, this problem B method here, um, if you feel really expert about problem B, you're ready to try the ones on the back maybe if you understand what's going on there. had a chance a minute here to think about these, okay? So problem A, I do want to highlight, the only thing I want to highlight on problem A is not the technique, I think everyone's pretty clear, oh, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, but keep in mind again that you get a square root of 17 and a negative root 17, that you're looking for two answers here, that's, 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 that could happen here, uh, that both things would work, and also notice that unlike the warm-up, this doesn't come out very nicely, am I right? Root 17 is the fact that it doesn't come out Nicely, a problem? No, not at all. We still have our answers. If you wanted a, an approximation with your calculator, you could get it. So whatever. So that looks good. I like that. Problem B, did anyone actually answer um, why 25 is being added to both sides? And can you explain like the, the thought process there? Can you decide? Friends you want to take a stack, Andres? Yeah, this is the technique, in case you didn't know here. This is, problem B is, is us showing you an, uh, an example of someone completing the square to solve this problem. But, it's still, the question still remains, like why, okay, I, I get it, we're completing the square, but how do we know to add 25, and what, what's going on there? Um, we want a little more depth there. Harry, yeah. So, like, unless you factor the x squared minus 10x plus 25, you should go to x minus 5. Yeah. Um, it, it creates not just any factorization, but a perfect square on the left, which is the thing that we're desiring. If we're going to try and take a square root, then I hope we have a perfect square that we're trying to take the square root of, right? We saw in problem A that this is such a desirable situation to be in, isn't it? We love this technique in problem A. So this is in problem B, us like trying to like apply wishful thinking. We're like, we'd like that to happen again. Is it true in algebra, by the way, that we could add anything we like to both sides? Would you like to add 50 to both sides? Knock yourself out, right? So we can add anything we like. How about 25, right, is the, is the, is the point. Does that make our life easy? And the answer is, it turns out it does work out nicely. Um, how do we? To find that value, yeah. you do 10 divided by 2, and then 5 and then 2. Yeah. And then like, yeah, and then square it, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be what works here. But even if you don't know why 25 was chosen, uh, do you agree that this and this really are the same thing? Even if you, even if you're not sure still why 25 was chosen, do you agree that the two things I boxed up there are in fact the same? What would it take to convince you if you're not sure? What would you have to do to convince yourself? Write it out. Yeah, and by write it out, we actually mean what here? What does x minus five squared mean really? What does x minus 5 squared mean? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, 
You mean multiplying? Yeah. Yeah. If you multiply it out, actually, remember x minus 5 squared means x minus 5 times x minus 5. So multiply that out quickly. I think you guys are good at that. And see that, in fact, you do get x squared minus 10x plus 25. Am I right? Do you get that? I think you do. x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus Boil it out, right? You do get the thing we started with. So even if you're not sure why we added 25 to both sides, you do acknowledge that all this work is right. Yeah. This this all this person's work is correct. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, it seems like what Aaron said is working. Like you divide that number by two and then square it or something. Um, so try that technique on the back if you haven't already. Um, let me let me. Let me throw a couple more, slightly more challenging completing the square problems at us here, okay? Uh, because this was very convenient, but what if we had, say, let's, let's do this one, x squared plus, uh, I don't know, remind, here, we'll do a minus again. I don't know, plus 5x five five uh, equals uh, whatever. 8, all right, fine. All right. All right, so um, how do we how do we complete the square here? Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna be allowed to add something. It seems like this trick was really cool. We're gonna be allowed to add something to both sides. That's certainly an okay thing to do. But the big question is like, how do we compute that? And why does Aaron's technique seem to work? And why does it seem a little messier here? And this is just a new problem I just made up, right? Just because it's in fact I can make up and use any numbers I like, and we should be able to do this. Yeah. Do you have a question? Now, how do we know that though? Like, how did you? How do we work that out? I have a picture that I think you're gonna like. I think you're gonna like. You ready? It involves us actually. Are you ready? Actually completing a square. And that's what that picture on your placemat is meant to evoke as well. Okay. So this is a square. This is meant to be a square in my picture on the board here. And this is meant to be a square. And so is this. These are all squares. This and this. These are not squares. These are rectangles. Are you okay with me? Yeah. Here. All right. This square I'd like to represent x squared. I'm trying to write this out as a square, as an area model. So if this is a square and its area is x squared, then what are its side lengths here and here? How about x and x? Do you agree? Because x times x is x squared. All right. 5x, I'd like to have that represent th these two areas combined. Now, would you agree that the geometry is right on this picture, that those two rectangles have equal area? Don't they? Aren't they the same congruent rectangles? So if the total area of those two rectangles is 5x, what must the area of each one individually be? Yeah, 2.5x, right? So this will be 5 halves x, and this will be 5 halves x. Do you see what we just did there? We split that piece, that area, into two pieces. Does that make sense? What must the side length be? We already have this side length as x. So what must that side length be of this rectangle? That must be, yeah, that must be 2.5, likewise down here. And I think we're finally ready to say what the question mark is. What's the area that's missing? This square has side lengths 5 halves, halves times 5 halves, right? So what would that be? 25 fourths or 6.25, someone says, that's fine. So I think I figured out that 25 fourths is the thing that literally completes the square, doesn't it? Like it literally makes these sum to an area that's a square. You like that? Now, one way to write the area of the square is this way. X squared, just add up all the parts. X squared plus 5 halves X plus 5 halves X, X plus 25 fourths. That's what's written here, isn't it? But there is another way to express the area of the square. If I cover up all the inside part, how would you compute the area of this square? Isn't it x plus 5 halves? What'd you say, Danielle? Do you agree? Do you see now what, what's going on here? Because really, as we make this move from this line of our work to this line of the work, one way to think about it would be to use this area model and be like, hey, these are just two ways of expressing the same area, aren't they? Now, we do have to do some fraction work over here. What is that? Uh, 
2 plus 25 is 57 fourths. Is that right? Check my work on that. Or you see. Yeah. All right, good. And then, I mean, that, that was the hard part of the problem, right? Then we're done here, isn't it? It's x equals the square root of 57 over 4 minus 5 halves, and also negative the square root of 57 over 4 minus 5 halves, right? It's either one of those. I mean, the hard part was completing the square. Taking the, squ the whole taking the square root technique is not, is not the hard part of this, right? You can handle that. You like that technique? Yes. You don't like it? I remember doing this book. Yeah, I think you should have before. Um, if, you're, if you haven't yet done the two problems on the back of this worksheet, please, please do those. Um, let me give you one more, if, okay. if you can stand it. Okay, I can do it. All right. <laughs> Are you oh, ready no, for this? No, 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 no
an expert at completing the square, even in the most terrible of situations like waiting. The, the reason, guys, by the way, the reason that this technique is so important to me, the reason that I love it so much, and I want, I really, really want you to know it, is that this works no matter what constants you use in your equation. This technique that we're just now discussing is so general and so powerful that it, every quadratic that I can hand you falls. Falls. Uh, when when it's subjected to this technique, right? Every quadratic you'll ever meet will be sol solvable using this technique. Well, what am I saying? I'm saying that if you want it, I don't, I don't recommend this necessarily, but if you want it on your quadratic matching thing we did at the beginning, you could have put them all on that box if you really wanted, right? Now, I don't, again, I don't recommend that for other reasons we'll get into, but, but it, they all technically would work. So this is key, right? We should be able to get the reason that every quadratic works is because can't we write every quadratic in this form? Can't we get it to the place where we complete the square and have it be x minus something squared equals something? In which case, once we get it into that form, once we get it into this form, then we're like done, right? We just take square roots. So that's that's the powerful idea here that I want to make sure you're seeing loud, you're hearing loud and clear, you're, you're seeing. Now, what's interesting about the homework that I just gave you? They're not coordinates. Those are the. No, those are the. They're the solutions. <laughs> I'm giving you the answers on your homework. Okay. So, all right. So when you do this, the thing I'm obviously I'm working looking for is for you to get, you know, arrive at the right answers. So you can check them in the original equation. That'd be a good way to check. But you can also just check. I have the answers there for you. So you need to do the work. But then hopefully you arrive at the answers that are in those boxes. Now, in, in the in the brackets. Now I will say if there are answers like on number three that are kind of messy, when you get your answer, you'll have it be something like we got up here. Which actually, just to be clear, guys, I actually prefer this. I'd like you to write these answers. I actually don't like the way the worksheet writers who wrote this answer who wrote their answers. I'd prefer you give me the exact answer rather than the rounded answer. But in order to check your answer, you may want to. You may want to like just type in your square root, you know, use the square root button on your calculator to help, help you see whether you got the right answer. Now, one other thing I'd like to say about this homework is there are 24 problems. Okay, I don't normally give a homework quite like this here, but what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do as much of this as you think you need to be a dominating master of this technique. If that means you need to do them all because like you need a lot of practice, that's great. If that means you need to do none of them, yes. that's also fine. But keep in mind that tomorrow when you walk in, I will be giving you one of these problems, cold, to do on your own with no notes, okay? Like you need to be able to do, do this method, like, right? So do whatever it takes to be like an expert at this, complete the square method, okay? So maybe if you, if you feel already pretty confident, start on the back, right? Do whatever you need to do to become an expert.
guys haven't done it already, did you put your scissors back in the box? Did you put your scissors back in the boxes? Scissors back in the box. Scissors. That is correct, yes. Which one? Oops. You already did these. What's that? 50, 62? No, 70. I guess, by the way, I put up the work on the back of the first worksheet I gave you. If you got, did you get root 72? Minus 7 and negative root 72 minus 7. Good. 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 Carry on. If someone at your table could bring up the box, please, and just place it up here, that would be great. Take it easy, guys. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you.